All right, welcome to another episode of the Lock Room, Bort Bortmouth. All right, Bortmouth was uh the second. I think they were, they came in second. Yeah, they came in second last season behind Fulham. Um, and let's take a look at their squad. All right, coached by O'Neill. They have three goaltenders on their roster. Obviously, everybody knows Neto. Neto's a really good um, worldwide known uh, goaltender. Uh, defenders, uh, nothing super outstanding. Uh, I know Fedrix. Um, I've heard of Kelly. But nothing nothing that makes you say, oh my God, they got him. You know what I mean? Some no, pretty decent I, names in here. Like the favorite contender to actually go down this season. Um, a lot of people. Yeah. That was small midfield, man. Yeah, very small, yeah. very small. But I mean, midfield. you look at their midfield, right? And because it's so small as far as the number of players they have there, does that, you know, do you... Do you look at it as an advantage or a disadvantage? I, I look at it as a gamble, to be honest. It's not an advantage or disadvantage. It all depends on the season. Nobody knows what's going to happen, man. It's football at the end of the day, you know. But as you can see there, they already have three midfielders already, you know, injured. Mm -hmm. That only gives you, like, what, five players to pick from on a weekly basis until these three cats get, you know, healthy. Right, but that also brings the question of, you know, what with the guys that are healthy, more reps, will, will more reps help them develop uh, better than getting less reps? Because as you see in some of the bigger clubs, right, let's take Man City, for example, they have so, many, so much star power, so many different guys that you lose some of those players, not because you're losing them to someone else, just because... You know, uh, they wanted to go here, or whatever. You're losing them because they're not playing on your squad. They're not getting enough uh, enough time on the field. And granted, healthy competition is a big thing, and it's good. But for a team like this that's still growing, still trying to to get to a certain place, I think that you know the likes of uh, Lerma is going to be one of those guys that's trying to solidify himself at, at, as a Premier League midfielder. Um, Cook is definitely another one you know they have they have some decent talent here in the middle it's just all about you know one staying healthy and two how many touches on the ball how many games they're actually playing because you can have a guy who can be a superstar but if he's only playing one or two games a, a, a season right you're never gonna see it until he until you set them on loan or you lend them off to another team or you sell them off to another team and then he gets prime minutes there and then they shine, and then you're like, oh, man, why did we ever get rid of this guy? You know what I mean? It happens all the time. A great attribute. I'll definitely will give you that much on that. And that's going to be a great thing for them to grow. But I don't know, man. I just feel like as a new team just coming off of the championship, you kind of want to have the most help as you possibly can. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. It's just it puts them in a very tough, tough position, you know? Yeah. Like, look back at, like, when Liverpool won the league, finally, for the first time after like 30 years, um, they didn't buy any any players. And then what happened after like January? Like they started like getting injured. Then you look at the next season and it's injury after injury, you know? Mm -hmm. So not a bad thing. I hope that they recover soon. But I think that this means that they're going to have to get more midfielders next season because now the guys that have worked so hard this season – you know, you're going to have to give them a break at some point. So, yeah, I hope right. they go in on the uh, on the transfer window in December because mm -hmm. they're going to need it. Man. All right. Now, let's take a look at their attackers. Right. Um, I mean, personally, Anthony has been one of those guys that, you know, they, they found a diamond in the rough there. He's been performing day in, day out. Um I think Ryan Christie. I mean, yeah, he's probably one of their one of their older players. He's been with them for a little bit now. Uh, I think that um, he still got some stuff in the tank. It's gonna and it should show. I think he has a quality. I mean, he's been in the Premier League uh, back when they were when I think back when they the last time they were in the Premier League, he was on the team. Yeah. So I think he has the experience and uh, leadership skills to help this uh, help this. You know, attacking um, crew just really get on the right path and understand. I mean, they aren't doing too bad on the table. 
their their mid table. Um, so that goes into you know picking picking uh, who you think is going to be their their top guy in each one of these categories. Uh, uh, let's start off with the attackers. Um, like you said, Anthony, I definitely like him. He's definitely done a lot of cool stuff for this club this year. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but Chrissy, I have a soft spot for him too, man. I like yeah. loyalty. He's gone yeah. up and down with the team. So I, I would like for him to, uh, definitely put his foot down. When it yeah. comes to the midfielders, I'm Colombian. So, you know, I'm going <laughs> to He's going to show that. Uh, we got yeah. Yeah, no, no. So, so for attackers, I th definitely uh, agree. I think Anthony's the guy. I think Chrissy is going to just have to make sure that he plays his role and really just, you know, be very supportive of what, what's hot right now. Because Anthony's hot right now, and he's like the, the looking, you know, looking at the future kind of guy. But, you know, when, when guys are growing, sometimes everything will be good, and then they'll stumble and I think Chrissy will have to be there to kind of like pick up the pieces. Um, as far as like the midfield, I'm definitely looking at Lerma to to be more influential and be more of of a controlling midfielder. Uh, I know they normally look to Cook, I believe, to to kind of help control the middle, but I think Lerma should be the one that really dictates how they how they go forward. Yeah. Um, defensively, uh, again. Um, I like They're I like not Federix. Really done well defensively this so far. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, but you know, working what they got, um, uh, Senesi, um, he looks like he, he can probably hold his own. But uh, my my personal favorite on this would be Fedrix. I think he just came off an injury as well, so it'd be good to see when he's a hundred percent match fit. You know, um, to really be involved in how the the breakout from the back happens, how they push on the wings, and, you know, how the defense really sets up. And, you know what I mean? So who, who do you like as a defender to be, like, the the top dog? Um, definitely between Stevens and Fredericks. They've been there for a minute, you know. So mm -hmm. I like them, definitely. They have a tough job this year, this team, man, too. You know, they just lost their head coach, mm -hmm. you know, and now they have a new one. So style of play is going to have to change. Yep. And when you're in the Premier League, you're not really given the opportunities to change and to experiment with your style of playing. You just mm. have to go for it, you know. So. Yep, yep, yep. I think Neto's going to have to play, uh, play tall in the net uh, to really give them a chance. I mean, he he's always been a good good goaltender, uh, very solid, you know. But um, you can't leave it all to to the goalkeeper. I think uh, the defense definitely needs... It's one of those things, again, like I said, uh, with the previous team uh, that we spoke about. Um, it's one of those things that the defense needs to communicate very well in order for the team to do well. Without that communication, without that, that set plan, uh, they're going to struggle, right? And right now they're mid-table. Uh, they're struggling a little bit, but I, I, I think... They've been much luckier than they actually kind of in a way deserve to be, too. Yeah, I mean, I think that, honestly, let's take a look at their last fixtures. Um, let's see. What were their previous fixtures? Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, they drew against the Wolves. They got smashed by Liverpool. I mean, you're, you're playing a top-end team in Liverpool. At their right? own stadium. You know, so, and it, it's one of the first games back up in, in in the big, you know, in the big Premier League. But uh, you, you had a 4-0. Four, four like, all the top teams they've lost to. They were very competitive. Obviously, they beat Norwich. Uh, competitive with, like, the mid-table to lower-end teams. Uh, Wolves, um, surprisingly, are not doing well this season so far. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Might change now. They they have uh, Diego Costa on their team now, so. All right. I mean, um, also with Borthmith, I mean, look, another uh, another championship team that made it up, and they were able to beat them. So I mean, it looks like they're beating the teams that they need to beat, right? And 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 when the team comes up from the premier from from the championships of the Premier League, you need them to beat 
the lower end teams to middle team, at least compete with the middle teams, you don't expect them to jump right up front and say, we're going to be all the top end teams. That that doesn't normally happen, right? Yeah. But in a scenario like this, right, they're doing very well to beat Austin Villa, who was expected to be on the top half of the table. Um, they beat them uh, day one. Uh, after that, obviously, Man City, Arsenal, they got they just got it handed to them. Uh, they beat Northwich in a shootout. No goalie was present, apparently. Still, They're still looking for Leno. Um, Liverpool got gave them just, obviously, a whirlwind and smashed them 9-0. Uh, they held their own against Wolves, who's a little more experienced in the Premier League uh, as far as a team. Uh, and they beat North uh, Nottingham Forest. So, you know, with, with Bournemouth, I think they're going to be on the lower end of the table. I think they're... They're going to be fighting not to get relegated, in my opinion. I think they're going to sit somewhere down by like 15, 15, uh, anywhere from 18 to 15. I don't think they're going to be bottom, bottom, but I think they're going to be, you know, just escape. If they do escape, they're going to be just escaping uh, the relegation zone. Great escape, yeah, man. You know what I mean? I so, agree with you on that. I yeah. don't see them being consistent with it. I definitely think that they haven't been fortunate with the run of fixtures that they've had so far. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely the fact that they beat Nottingham and Drew with Wolves kind of proves that. Like you said, they can't beat the teams that they can't beat. It's just that uh, they got to stay consistent with it. I kind of wish that they didn't get rid of their coach so quickly. But hey, yeah, yeah, I mean, it needs to happen and it has to happen. It has to happen. I mean, that's one of those things, right? Um, the coach helped them get to where they are, right? Great season last season. You know, came in second in the championship. Um, came in here. Uh, and, you know, they're trying They're trying to compete. Getting rid of a coach that early into the next level of play. I don't, I, I don't know. I can't say I can justify the firing. <clears throat> because sometimes... Coaches start off on a rocky road. You know, it happens. The guy just got you to this to this level, right? And he lost you a few games and you fire him. I don't think it's just, you know? And, and, it, and it wasn't like they lost to, to an, another bottom level team, like another, you know, lower end team. Like if they would have lost to Nottingham Forest under him, then I could have seen, okay, may, maybe it's time for a change. Maybe. But, um... I don't think they really gave it any real chance to develop. They fired him right after the Liverpool game. I you lost, you know so. what I mean? Yeah. Yes. So it's one of those things like you literally fire him after playing like four or three games. Let's see. Right. Uh, okay. So they, he won here. He lost to two teams that are on top of the table. And you and, and, and yeah, he gets. He gets a win here against a team that you should be competitive with or beating. It is, the, he, it is the League Cup, though. So I can see them saying that that doesn't count. You know? Okay. All right. Let's take that one off the board then. Right? But then you go here. Okay. You had three, three losses to teams that are expected to be top five. You just made it from the championship. That doesn't justify firing him. There was either more things in the background that nobody was privy to. That that caused them to get fired, or 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 they have bad ownership, right? That that that's what it really comes down to. You got you got to really take a look. Like, you know, he's competing against the teams that he's supposed to be competing against, right? I mean, obviously these two don't count because he's already gone. But you didn't even get a, you didn't even let him get a chance to get a few more games in against teams that they should be beating. If you are a Bournemouth fan. And you expected them to beat Liverpool, beat Arsenal, beat Man City? I'm sorry. I need you to wake up and understand that the reality of it is not it's not gonna happen. Right? It, it, it just it just can't. Like that would be a huge, a huge miracle if they were to actually beat these any one of these teams. It has happened, man. I'm not gonna it, lie to you. But yeah, that that I'll that's great and all. But I I just I just don't think that that you base a coach's job on teams that 
were pretty much a guarantee to 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 you yeah, know yeah, give no, you a 100%, beating. Hundred percent. And I feel like it's kind of like also. I don't know, man. I feel like it's like bad history too with uh, Graham Potter. Like he, uh, I mean, not Graham Potter. Sorry, um, Scott Parker. Uh, he got fired like right around the same time last two mm-hmm. seasons ago. I go with Fulham. Mm-hmm. What happened to him too? Like, do you think that he's just going to end up becoming just a championship coach? He's never going to become a Premier League, a household. Like, what's going on with him? You know, like. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, we we can definitely have a segment with some of these coaches that got, have gotten fired because obviously he's one of uh, two major firings in the Premier League already. This uh, six you, weeks in, ago, maybe three, four years ago, people were saying that he was going to be the next England manager, mm-hmm. and now he can't even hold a job in the Prem. So it's like, you know, again, I in this situation, I don't think it was fair. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's one of those situations that was unfortunate because i think that there there was more to prove for him and this team you know and now the team just kind of has to go with the new coach and try to prove it under a whole new thing you know a whole new set uh of directives and what they're doing and i mean for the new coach not a bad start You're, you're you're tying with a team you're supposed to be competitive with you're beating a team you're supposed to beat i get it right but that doesn't say anything about the coach because these are teams you're supposed to be competitive with the whole time. Right. You know, it isn't fair to judge a new coach on te- on teams you're supposed to be competitive with. Like if the new if the new coach came in and they beat Liverpool, Man City or Arsenal, then you say okay, maybe it was a coach. Yeah. But you you, you can't say that, right? Like I I don't think it was a just firing in my opinion. Yeah, just bad you timing. Know? Maybe yeah. there was something happening in the background. So right. Like- that, that's what I'm saying. There had to be more to it in the background. Maybe he wanted to make changes. Maybe he wanted to go after players and they didn't let him. And then the tanking, you know, the sometimes it, it is as petty as, oh, I didn't like what you what you wanted to do. And you don't like the way I came at you when I said we need to win. So on and so forth. Yeah, 9-0 is a, a bad loss to, to Liverpool. But listen, everybody's had that situation. Look, look at a team like Manchester United. They got beat four. Southampton. It, yeah. It's happened to them last two seasons in a row. Well, they've lost 9 0. Still the same yeah. coach. They still believe in his tactics. He's done yeah. well with them. So, so. I, I, either management made a bad call or they just stopped believing in, in, in the coach's tactics. We'll see as the season progresses.